Hello everyone and welcome back again. It's Mr. Muhammad Chaban and today we have a reading lesson. But before watching this video, you have to read Scant Leather from page 174 till 181. And if you don't have your book, don't worry. You can find reading text at the end of this video. Let's start a lesson. First guys, what genre is Scant Leather? What kind of text is it? Is it informative text? Is it fiction? Non-fiction? Is it drama? What kind is it? Scant leather, guys, is humorous fiction. Humorous fiction. Humorous means it's funny. It makes you laugh when you read it. Fiction, it means that it is not real. Not real. So, humorous fiction tells the funny stories of imaginary people or events, not real. Humorous fiction can be realistic, meaning that the story is possible, but not necessarily true. So guys, the events or people in this story could be happen. It is not impossible to happen. The characters seem real and setting is realistic or in a real place. Fiction that is humorous uses exaggeration, people or events that probably would not happen. So the features of humorous fictions tell funny stories, unreal people or events, but it could be happen and humorous fiction use exaggeration, people, and events. Okay, what about the characters in the story? The characters. The characters here, the authors, Patrick, the authors, and we have Eddie, Eddie, and he is called Crazy Eddie. Why? Because he made a lot of crazy adventures. And we have Mr. Maldon, or Eddie's father, Eddie's father. These are the characters of our story today. Okay, guys, what about the settings of the story? Settings means where and when the story happens, where it happens. The story happens on a farm or on Eddie's father's farm. What are what is the main idea? The main idea of the story, the main idea is how to find adventure, how to find adventure in ordinary events. This is the settings and this is the main idea. Okay guys, how can you describe the characters when you read the story? Can you describe the characters of the story? Eddie, the author and Mr. Maldon, can you describe them? What about Eddie? Eddie is called Crazy Eddie. Why? Eddie is crazy, unrealistic, and dangerous because he made crazy adventures and he has a lot of crazy ideas. So, Eddie is crazy, unrealistic, and dangerous. What about the narrator? Narrator seems to be more responsible. He is not crazy like Eddie, but he is more responsible. Mr. Maldon, or Eddie's father, he has a nervous condition. He has a nervous condition. And when you read the story, you will know why he has a nervous condition. Of course, because of the crazy adventures of his son, Eddie. Crazy adventures. What crazy adventures they made? First, Making and testing a deep sea diving machine. They made a diving machine. Number two, crashing in a homemade plane. They, they made a plane and they used it to take off from the roof. And when they took off from the roof, the plane crashed. So the crazy adventures that they made, making and testing deep sea diving machine crashing in a homemade plane after taking off from the roof. And the last one, being in a submarine that failed to surface with them in the pond. 
So guys, these are the crazy adventures they made. Diving machine, plane, and we have a submarine that failed to surface with them in the pond. What about examples of exaggeration in the story? And exaggerations, guys, means something you can't believe it could happen. Making a plane, it's exaggeration is a story. How can kids make a plane and the plane fly with them? Making a submarine, it's an exaggeration in the story. And exaggerations, guys, is a feature of humorous fiction. Eddie wants to dig a big hole. So guys, Eddie wants to dig a big hole to make a wild animal trap like Frank Buck. He wants to make, or he wants to dig a hole like someone called Frank Buck. Who is Frank Buck? Guys, Frank Buck is or was an American hunter, an animal collector, an author as well as a film actor. So, Eddie wants to dig a big hole to make animal trap like Frank Buck. Frank Buck, uh, guys, he was American actor, American hunter, uh, animal collector. Why do they decide to fill the hole? After digging the hole, Eddie and his friend decided to fill the hole again. Why? They don't want to be in trouble. They don't want to be in trouble. They don't want Mr. Malden's cows to fall in the hole, so Mr. Malden's or Eddie's father will be upset. So guys, they decided to fill the hole because they don't want to be in trouble. They don't want Mr. Malden to be upset because if they dig the hole or if they lift the hole like this, Mr. Malden's cows will fall in the hole. So they decided to fill the hole again. Why can they fill the hole? Why can they fill the hole? They decided to fill the hole but they stopped and now they can fill it. Why? because a skunk falls in the hole so now they have to get the skunk out before filling the hole so the problem is that they found a skunk in the hole so they have to get it out before filling the hole again what do you know about skunks from the story after reading this part of the story can you tell me what do you know about skunks? What information do you get from the text? So guys, from the text, we know that skunks spray an awful odor when they feel trapped or frightened. So guys, skunks spray an awful odor when they feel trapped or frightened. Number two, skunks are great or excellent diggers. They can dig greatly. So, they spray of other when they feel trapped or frightened and skunks are great diggers. This information we get from the text. The author writes for four reasons. When an author writes story or text, he has four reasons. Number one, maybe to explain or inform or to entertain or to persuade the readers to do something or to express feelings. Guys, why did the author write this kind of letter when you read the story? You read the story now? Why did the author write this kind of letter? To explain or inform, to entertain, persuade, express feelings. Can you tell me now? What is the main idea or why the author writes scan letter? Yes, he wrote it to entertain us or to entertain the reader. So guys, the author wrote scan letter 
to interchange theory. Okay, guys, let's check your understanding to the story. But before answering or before watching this movie, again, please read the story from page 134 to 181. Let's answer this question, guys. Which character is the most adventurous? Which character is the most adventurous? Eddie, Scan, the narrator, or Mr. Malton? Yes, of course. The most adventurous or craziest character is Eddie. He's called Crazy Eddie. Number two, which word best describes the narrator or the author? How can you describe his friend or the author? Cautious, silly, daring, rude. Of course, he is more responsible. So I can say he is cautious. Cautious. The events of the plot happen. Here we are talking about settings. The events happen at the mountains for in the park, on vacation. Okay guys, can you tell me the settings or where the story happens? Of course, it happens at the mountains for. Okay guys, why did the, the author write the story? Why the author writes a story? To inform, express feelings, entertain, persuade. Can you tell me now why did the author write kind of letter? Yes, he wrote it to entertain. Okay, guys, to be continued, inshallah, wait for the next video and don't forget to read the story before watching this video and goodbye. The Skunk Ladder by Patrick F. McManus Illustrated by Richard Johnson Question of the Week How can we find adventure in ordinary events? My friend Crazy Eddie Muldoon and I were sitting on the Muldoon Corral fence one summer afternoon trying to think of something to do. This was shortly after I had nearly drowned in the creek while testing Eddie's deep-sea diving apparatus and after we had crashed in our homemade plane during takeoff from the roof of the Muldoon barn and after our submarine had failed to surface with us in the pond, but before Mr. Muldoon started being treated by old Doc Mosby for a mysterious nervous condition. I recall mentioning to Eddie that his father seemed to be awfully jumpy that summer and Eddie said he had noticed it too and wondered if it might not be caused by eating vegetables. Even as we sat on the fence, Mr. Muldoon came by on his tractor and stopped to study us suspiciously. What are you two up to now? he demanded. Nothing, Pa, Crazy Eddie said. Just trying to think of something to do. Mr. Muldoon shuddered. Well, when you think of it, you let me know before you start to do it, you hear? Sure, Pa, Eddie said. I guess what we'll do is go dig in the dirt. We've been talking about doing that. Okay, said Mr. Muldoon, shifting his tractor into gear. Just don't build nothing. Then he drove off. What kind of hole are we going to dig? I asked Eddie. He stared off into space, his face enveloped in that dreamy expression that always accompanied one of his wondrous new ideas. A big hole, he said. A real big hole. Digging the hole occupied us for most of a week. One of the problems with digging a big hole is that it is difficult to know when it is big enough and deep enough. There are basically two kinds of holes dug in the ground. One, applied holes, such as for posts, wells, mines, etc. And two, holes for hole's sake. Eddie and I were digging one of the latter. Eventually, the hole was so deep we could barely heave shovelfuls of dirt up over its sides. At that point, Eddie judged it to be finished. Since Eddie had insisted that we keep the sides of the hole squared up, we had to pull ourselves out of it on a rope, one end of which was tied to a pile of stumps nearby. The stump pile also served to screen our digging activities from the view of Mr. Muldoon, who was cutting hay in a field on the far side of the farm. 
As Eddie often pointed out, any kind of engineering feat should be screened from the eyes of the engineer's parents. That way you could concentrate on your work and didn't have to be answering a lot of dumb questions all the time. We were immensely proud of the hole, and I still don't believe I've ever seen a nicer one. It was so nice, in fact, that Eddie abandoned his view of it as purely an aesthetically pleasing hole and began trying to think of it as practical. You know what we could do with this hole, he said. We could make a wild animal trap out of it, you know, like Frank Buck does in Africa. We could cover it up with branches and leaves and grass, and wild animals would come along and fall into it. Then we could tame them and teach them to do tricks. Eddie fairly glowed with enthusiasm as his idea began to take shape. And then we could start our own circus, he went on. We could charge people to see our animals do tricks. We might even get rich. Gosh, I bet we could catch a deer or an elk or a bear or a mountain lion or one of your father's cows, I put in. Eddie's glow of enthusiasm faded. Yeah, he said. I never thought of that. Both of us stood there silently for a moment, thinking of Mr. Muldoon staring down into the hole at one of his milk cows. It was unpleasant to think about. Tomorrow, we'd better fill the hole back in, Eddie said. How about tonight? Maybe a cow will fall in tonight. Eddie pondered this possibility for a moment. I got it, he said. There's a big old door out behind the barn. We'll drag that down here and put it over the hole. And that is what we did, before knocking off work for the day, secure in the knowledge that the door would save us from the uncomfortable experience of watching his father undergo one of his fits of hysteria. Early the next morning, Eddie and I headed for the big hole, prepared to start the tedious task of undigging it. As we approached the excavation, a familiar odor reached our nostrils. Must be a skunk around here someplace, Eddie said. Maybe it's in the hole, I said. Couldn't be. We covered it with the door. Nevertheless, the skunk was in the hole. He had apparently found an open space under the door, slipped in for a look around, and plummeted the eight feet or more to the bottom of the hole. Oddly, he did not seem to be frightened of us. Even stranger, for we did not know that skunks were great diggers, he had hollowed out a huge cavern under one side in an attempt to dig his way out of the hole. We can't fill in the hole with the skunk in there, I said. How are we going to get him out? 